Hey guys, my name is Lucas and welcome back to my studio. So in this video we will be making a TikTok ticking clock sound for music production. It is a great percussive tool and it can be used in many songs. Um, I think it was used in Animals by Mouse and Garrix as well. Um, but yeah, let's just jump right into it. So here we are in FL Studio and the first thing that you want to do is of course set your BPM. And then we want to find some sort of percussive element, something that doesn't have a lot of low end, not a lot of high end, but you know, some something around, you know, the high mids and the high end. So let's find some percussive elements. Percussions. I think this one is good. So let's just create a pattern, let's call it clock and let's add it into our playlist. Then we want two of these percussions. Um, and if we turn on the metronome, we want these percussions to go, you know, twice as fast as the metronome. So let's do like this. So you know, this is kind of the, the foundation for our clock. So we want to route this to the same channel, so channel one. So let's just call this clock as well. And what we want to do is to take one of them and pan them all the way left and the other all the way right. And of course, if you are not listening on studio monitors or a couple of speakers, if you're listening on a mobile device, then you may not be able to hear the effect of the panning. Um, and you know, the panning is also kind of, if you like it or not, but I really like to have the clock effect going from one side to the other. If you don't like it, don't do it. Um, you can still make this. So when we have done the panning, we want to take one of the elements and pitch it up a bit and take the other and pitch it down a bit. So now it kind of seems and sounds like a clock. And of course, if you have this in your track, the pitch needs to fit with your kind of scale and the chords and melodies that you're playing. But right now we don't have any of that. So I will just make some sort of pitch that goes nice to each other. I think that's fine. So the next thing that you want to do is to EQ the sound. And again, you know, the EQ and how you equalize your sound really depends on what kind of percussive element that you have found, because it really, it really depends on, you know, the sound. And maybe you don't have this sound and maybe you use another sound. Maybe you use a synth for this kind of thing. Um, so, you know, it really depends on your sound, but you want, you want some sort of, you know, starting at the low mids, going through the mids, high mids and presence. And you want to kind of cut it slightly off when you reach the high frequencies. The next thing we want is a filter because I think that we have too many high frequencies and the EQ doesn't do the job as great as I want to. So if we find a filter, so we want to make a low pass filter. Let's turn the resonance all the way down and the cutoff all the way down. And let's, you know, slowly raise the cutoff to something that we like. I like it here. And if we turn up the resolution, you know, the very, very tip top notch of the point where we are cutting will be kind of enhanced just a tiny bit. This is without the filter. This is with the filter. So it kind of, it doesn't do very much, but it kind of makes the sound go into the background. And we also need a reverb. You know, it's a very, very small plate reverb we need. So the decay time all the way down and the wet all the way down. We want to cut all the lows we want a little more highs and we want a small room size and then we can slowly raise the wet signal. Mm -hmm. 
and we can also stereo separate the reverb if we want to. And there we have the reverb. So this is without the reverb. And this is with the reverb. So, you know, the clock kind of goes together with the room, together with the rest of the music. Of course, if you have a whole track, you should always use a send channel for your reverbs. Um, but this is just to demonstrate that you need a tiny amount of reverb to kind of get it into the space and depth as where you want it to. So, yeah. And if you think that your panning is, you know, too wide, if you used panning, as I told you before, you don't have to. But if you did like me, you can always turn down the stereo separation. So let's just kind of turn the panning all the way down to mono and then slowly raise it up till we have something that we like. If you don't have any stereo speakers, headset, whatever, then you can't hear the effect of this. But let's just do it anyway. We go all the way mono and slowly raise it. I, th I, I like that. Um, and if we remove all of the effects, it sounds like this. And with the effects, it sounds like this. You can also get creative by adding some slightly, you know, slightly lowered volume delay. Um, and if we take the fruity delay too, let's just start by turning the delay all the way down. So now we also have a slight delay, which sounds like this. So there you have it guys, it's, it's really easy to make, as I say in most of my videos. But when you kind of get the feeling for it, then it's really not that hard. You really need to think about, is this going to be panned left or right? Is this going to be in the middle? Um, because this will really affect how your reverb will be added and also if you add delay like I just did you don't have to do that. I think you know the reverb is a must but the delay is nothing you need it's just for fun if you have a lot of room and space in your mix because you don't have a lot of bass you may not have a lot of synths then this is a very very great thing to do. But other than that I'll just say thanks for watching and if you have any suggestions comments anything comment them down below and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video.